This episode is brought to you by Meerkat Village. Being a special needs parent often requires a superhuman ability to manage a ton of different things all at once. Between work, school, doctor's appointments, therapies, our own self-care, and anything else life can throw at us, it can be tough to manage all this stuff. And don't even get me started on trying to keep everyone communicating with each other because that seems to be impossible sometimes. But Meerkat Village can help. They say it takes a village, and this is especially true for special needs families. Meerkat Village is a platform for Android and iOS that helps to keep everyone in your village communicating and coordinating their efforts to support your child. Whether you're tracking a child's progress at school or brainstorming new strategies to help with behavioral concerns, Meerkat Village helps everyone stay connected and on the same page. It's all done inside one easy-to-use HIPAA and FERPA compliant app. For more information, visit meerkatvillage.com. That's M-E-E-R-K-A-T-V-I-L-L-A-G-E dot com. Welcome to the Autism Dad Podcast. I'm Rob Gorski. As a single dad to three amazing autistic kids, I've been the go-to resource for parents across the globe navigating neurodivergence since 2010. Building on the success of my award-winning blog, The Autism Dad, this podcast provides parents raising autistic or neurodivergent kids with comfort, community, resources, and validation. You'll also hear inspiring stories from parents just like you, reminding you that you're not alone. So don't miss out. New episodes drop every Monday and Wednesday. Subscribe on your favorite podcast listening app and visit theautismdad.com for more information. On this week's episode of the Autism Dad podcast, I sat down with my youngest son, Emmett. Uh, Emmett is 15, he's autistic, and we answer one of your pressing questions this week. And that question was, how do you talk to your kids about their autism diagnosis? And, you know, I, I think it was best that I involved Emmett with this because I'm not autistic myself. And, you know, I can speak to it from a parent's perspective, but, you know, I, I don't have that firsthand, like, how would I want to be told uh, kind of experience. And Emmett is so good at at articulating this stuff. And he's so thoughtful in the way that he does things. And, you know, I think if anybody's in a position to answer this question, um, in a general sense, Emmett is the person to do it, right? Everybody's different and every situation is different and we're not going to give like specific advice, uh, but but just general things that I think are appropriate for most situations. So uh, thank you all so much for taking the time to tune in. Keep your questions coming. They're amazing. And uh, I hope you enjoy the interview. So Emmett and I are going to take on one of your questions today, aren't we? Yeah. All right. And it's kind of a doozy, I think, because I, I think it's it's very common that we get asked this. And I've always kind of felt weird trying to answer this because I, f I feel like everybody's situation is different. And it's complicated. And it is it is complicated. I, I think you're right. Because not everyone will take it the same way. Yeah, that's true. So the question that you guys have been asking uh, is how do you approach your child and explain to them that they were diagnosed uh, with autism? And I've been thinking a lot about this, and Emmett and I have kind of gone back and forth about how to address this. And I think we've settled on the approach that his opinion is, is more important than mine <laughs> right now. And uh, he's got a big smile on his face. He likes hearing that. Uh, and then I'm going to start off and just share a couple of things that I feel are important and then I'm going to let Emmett kind of take it from there and we'll just kind of go back and forth. So I don't remember at what age we had that conversation with you guys. I don't remember having the conversation, to be honest. Yeah, we, we've had it a couple of times over the years, but I think it wasn't directly about me. Well, yeah, I think that's sort of that's sort of correct. And and I think what happened was it was more about um, helping you guys understand Gavin because Gavin yeah. was really struggling for a long time. And, you know, it was, it was important that you guys understood what was going on. And in the course of that conversation, I think we discussed that, you know, Gavin's autistic and he's, you know, his brain works in a different way and that's okay because it, it works for him and that you and your brother are both autistic and your brains work differently than each other's brains and Gavin's brains. And that's okay because you guys get to see the world in a different way. And it was always built up to be positive and not a bad yeah. thing. And I think that's really important. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. I think a big part of it on how you do it 
and how your kids will react is how you say it and how you go about it. Because you can go and tell it to them like it's some sort of disease that they should be ashamed of. And you may not mean it like that, but if they're little kids and they're like, oh, I have this and not many people do, uh, like, is there something wrong with me? And I think a big part of explaining is just sort of explaining how it you are obviously different than other people because you're going to be. And everyone is different from each other because they're just going to be. But you might have more, not not prominent, but just... Quirks. Yeah, more more obvious quirks than other people. And that's not a bad thing. Mm-mm. It's just part of you. And I think that's another part of it. If you tell them, like, it's something that's separate from you, like, again, a disease or a virus or yeah. a sickness, then they're going to treat it as something that they shouldn't have. But if you explain that it's like a part of you and it's like part of what makes you who you are, then it's not going to be as not impactful, but negative. That's a that's a that's a really good point. And I, I want to build on that for a minute. OK, uh, I, I think that. I think that there's there's two things that are really important. One is when you explain it, you do it in a developmentally appropriate way. Yeah. So, so when I talked to you guys about it, I wasn't giving like a lecture or like a Ted talk on what autism was and all the biomechanical things and whatever. It was just very simple. Like, look, everybody's different. Everybody thinks differently. Everybody's brains are wired differently. And some people's brains are wired in a way that makes them autistic. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, and there might be some challenges that you face in your life that are a little bit different than what some other people face, but we all have challenges and, and that's okay. And one of the other things I think too, that's really important is in, in, in our house, we embrace the weird. And so, and I've told my kids this many times, like my kids are weird. I'm weird. How dare you? You guys are weird. You can be really weird and that's okay because that makes you amazing. Weird is not a bad thing. Being different is not a bad thing, right? I mean, who wants to be just like everyone else? That's kind of boring, right? And you yeah. guys sort of just being true to who you are and who you are is amazing. And and I've told you guys from day one, being different is okay. I'm weird and that's okay, right? We embrace it. Yeah. Uh, and we celebrate it actually, to be honest with you. Um, and so I, I think that's important because a lot of times kids with autism have behaviors that kind of make them stand out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and they can be considered by their peers, maybe as being a little weird or, you know, they can be made fun of or, or criticized for, for behaving differently. And I think it's just important that they understand that it's okay to be different. Yeah. And not everybody is going to behave the same way or, or experience things the same way or say things the same way. And being weird is okay. Being different is good. Can I uh, build off of that? Absolutely. Um, I had a thought, and it's also, uh, I think some parents might try and say, even though you have this, like, you're just like all the other kids, uh, because they, especially if it's, like, preschool where you're not in, like, a primary school system yet, uh, if, say, it's a situation sort of like, say it was just me and dad, and he wouldn't really notice the differences compared to the other kids until I was with the other kids. And if I was told I was just like the other kids and then I just got like slammed in my face, you're not like all of us because you're different somehow, which isn't bad. It can sort of, what would it? Maybe hit harder. Yeah, hit harder because they expected to be just like everyone else. So basically... I, I get what you're saying. And and I guess I... Trying to mask it isn't always the best thing to do. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, and I, think, I, I think that it also just sort of depends. You know, people don't want to stand out. They don't want... I mean, like, our society is such that it's like, you don't want to be different. You want to have the same things that everybody else has. You want to experience the same things and do it in the same way and 
you don't want to stand out in a crowd. You want to be the same. And, and I get that. And so I think sometimes it, it's, we think it's comforting maybe to tell them that, Hey, you're just like everyone else and it's okay. And it's whatever. And, and the truth is that they're not just like everyone else. I mean, they're different. Every kid is different. And, and that, that, that applies whether they're autistic or they have ADHD or they're neurotypical. Every kid is different. And, and I think that, I, I think that it's important to embrace that individuality and that uniqueness, whether, whether it's, uh, you know, because of challenges or because of maybe skills that they have, or just things that they like or don't like, everybody's different. And, and I think that that's, that's the big takeaway for me is that helping them understand that while they may be different, it's okay to be different. Yeah. Is that sort of, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also important to know there's always going to be other people that just don't like people for no reason. And I guess it depends on how old your yeah. kid is because especially in, and I don't know how old, uh, kids usually are when you tell them, but say in a situation where, uh, they're just about to enter high school, it's important to say that there's going to be people that hate you for no reason or hate other people for no reason. And it's nothing wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. Yeah. And I, and I think there's going to be people who are intolerant yeah. of, of your differences and there's going to be people who don't embrace them or who don't, um, who aren't comfortable with yeah. them. And that's okay. Right. But you know, and that kind of touches on something else. One of the things that I always instilled with you guys from the very beginning was not only that it's okay for you to be different, it's okay for other people to be different too. Yeah. And so when, when we want you to be understood and accepted and embraced for the unique, weird, amazing kid that you are. We also want to make sure that we're doing the same thing for other people. Right. And, and that we're embracing them for the weird, amazing, wonderful people that they are. Yeah. And, and so it, it has to go, it has to go both ways. Yeah. And, and I think when you approach it like that, you're, you're making them feel less alone because yeah. we're in a we're in a world full of people who are different and weird and amazing, right? I mean, and and if we if we want people to be tolerant of of our autistic kids, then we need to be tolerant of other kids who are different in different ways. Yeah. So it 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 has to go it has to go both ways. This episode is brought to you by Kenjo. Kenjo, where every Roblox experience becomes not just a game, but a learning opportunity. Kenjo's mission is to turn every second your child spends on Roblox into a moment of fun and education. Beyond the thrill of the game, Kenjo motivates kids in a number of ways. By seamlessly integrating with their Roblox account, children are naturally driven towards expert-reviewed content fostering both fun and learning. Every game is meticulously evaluated on a comprehensive 500 plus point scale by a dedicated team of learning experts, educators, software engineers, user experience designers, and even parents. The games that shine in both challenge and educational value earn a flame rating, guiding players towards richer, more meaningful content. And the motivation doesn't stop there. As they play and earn, kids are rewarded with Kenjo points, transforming achievements into real world rewards. Kids love Kenjo for the endless fun, adventures, and rewards. Parents appreciate the insights and clarity Kenjo offers, shedding light on their child's Roblox journey and helping them make informed decisions about what their child plays inside the Roblox world. Kenjo isn't just an app. It's an evolution in the gaming world. It's where playtime meets profound learning. Kenjo Basic is absolutely free. If you're looking for deeper insights and accelerated rewards for the kiddos, check out the Kenjo Plus subscription. So dive into Kenjo where every game is a lesson and every challenge an opportunity. Join the future of gaming by visiting theautismdad.com forward slash Kenjo. That's theautismdad.com forward slash K-I-N-J-O and use the code theautismdad to save 10% off a Kenjo Plus subscription. Yeah, and it's, I would say probably most people will not care if you're different or they will embrace your differences, but there's always going to be outliers. And I think that's what people are most afraid of. The fact that 
there's going to be one day where they meet that one outlier that's out there that just doesn't like people for any given reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not a reflection of you. It's more of a reflection of them. Yeah. Right. They're the ones with the problem. And it might be difficult to understand and, and hopefully you never have to deal with that. But, but odds are at some point you're going to have to. And I think that, you know, when you incorporate all of these things into this conversation in whatever way is most appropriate for your child, I, I think that it, it helps to, um, I guess, make it easier for them to accept and, and move forward. Yeah. And another thing you can do is do it gradually. I mean, I feel like that's maybe how it sort of happened with us because it was sort of like there was an issue that popped up. We discussed that issue. Yeah. And because that's if, true. if you slam someone with all the information all at once, it's probably definitely going to be overwhelming. Well, and you can also do it in a neutral environment too. Yeah. So like one of the, one of the positive ways that you can deliver news like this or have this conversation is maybe you go out somewhere and you're having ice cream and you have the conversation over ice cream. So, uh, or whatever it is that they enjoy. And, and so they're associating that conversation with something that's positive. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can, um, not stack the deck kind of sounds like whatever, but, but you can influence a little bit how, how they're going to react or respond. And, and I think largely, if you just have it matter of fact, like, Hey, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. Uh, everybody's different and different is okay. You know, and you may have some challenges or things that are more difficult for you, but we're going to help you with it. Yeah. And you're going to do amazing things in your life and, and just even leave it at that. I mean, we don't have to overcomplicate it. And no. like, like Emmett, like you're saying, you can address problems as they arise. So you can have that simple conversation. And then if something comes up down the road, you can have a more, maybe a more in-depth conversation that is helping them to navigate like that particular situation. I mean, I, I think we did some of that. Yeah. And I think another thing is if you like tell them like, Hey, can you sit down for a minute and then say like, I got to tell you something that's going to be scary to them. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like a good way to do it with someone like me would just be like, you're sitting down somewhere and say we're talking about just random things and uh, you can just randomly say, hey, did you know you have autism? And then the kid is probably going to say, definitely going to say, what's that? And then you can have this fun conversation about what it is. Uh, and it's not a negative thing because you're just having a conversation about it instead of hey, can you sit down? I have to tell you something. That sounds like you're going to tell them like they have an incurable disease. Or like mom and dad are getting divorced yeah. or like you sort of set the tone. And, yeah. and I think that's, you know, I, I think you're right. And, and, and that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good piece of advice in it. So I guess, you know, as we're kind of closing this off, I think that the things that you want to avoid are maybe too much information like info dumps that are way above their pay grade, right? It needs to be developmentally appropriate. And and like Emmett suggested, and I think this is really, really wise, is to sort of break it into chunks. You know, maybe address what needs to be addressed in a moment. Because with a lot of kids, you can have this conversation and they're not going to understand or they're not going to remember it. And you may have to yeah. have it multiple times in different ways so that as time goes on, they gain a better understanding. But just ensure that they understand th that they are amazing just the way they are. Yeah, I would say if I had to just give someone five bullet points on what to do, Okay. if it was just every, like this worked with everyone, I would say you got to set the tone, make it positive. That would be the first one. You got to do it gradually over time. So you just start off with like maybe some things that have happened and you can explain like, Hey, you know how, like, you don't like shirts or you don't like this texture of food? Well, that's probably the reason for it, mm -hmm. right? It's just who you are. Because if you slam all of that information, it's not going to be, it's going to be overwhelming. Right. Um, and you got to explain that there's going to be 
some people that just are intolerant mm-hmm. uh, so that they're not surprised when, say, something happens. Okay. Um, and if they're old enough, you got to explain what you do in that situation if that were to arise. And then you got to just be developmentally appropriate with the conversation you're having. And just make sure they understand that they're amazing yeah. just the way they are and that we accept and we are tolerant of people who are different. Yeah, because you don't want to have like a college essay and give it to a six-year-old. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. They're going to be like, what is all this? And there's there's books and there's social stories and things like that that you can find online uh, that can help you navigate some of these things. And I, And I think you could... Actually, you can join my free support group and, and talk to other parents and even autistic people in the, in the support group. Uh, I'll have that linked in the show notes so you guys can check that out um, and get advice from other people and just see how they handled it with their kids or, or even talk to some other autistic people um, to find out you know how it went for them or how they would prefer to be approached, you know, just like Emmett's doing. Yeah. So I, I think I think we covered for the most part. I mean, it, there's no yeah. one size fits all. No. And uh, I think as long as you do this with love and patience and empathy, um, I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. All right. So if you guys have any more questions, which I know you do because I get them all the time, just uh, you can email them directly at rob at the autism dad.com, or you can just visit listen dot the autism dad.com and, and leave your questions in the uh, comments for the podcast episodes. And we'll do our best to, to answer them for you. I'm not saying we're going to be right or wrong, but you can get our perspectives and sometimes that insight can be, uh, can be helpful. Yeah. You got anything else you want to add? No, not really. All right. Well, you guys have a fantastic week and uh, we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Before I let you go, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to tune in today. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And, you know, I put a lot of time and energy into each one of these episodes because I want there to be a resource for you that wasn't available for me when I was going through this with my kids. And, you know, I I want there to be a positive impact on your lives. I want you to be able to learn something and enjoy what you're hearing. So uh, thank you again. I really appreciate it. For more information, you can visit theautismdad.com. You can subscribe on any one of your favorite podcast listening apps. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye.